Okay, so this problem we're trying to figure out how many groups there are with order one, order two, order three, and order four. So um, some of these are relatively simple. Order one should be easy. So let's take a look. All right. If it's order one, it can only have one L. I'll use this little composition thing to represent um, uh, whoop, to represent the operator. So if there's only one element, it's got to be the identity. And E star E would have to equal E. OK, there's only one possible type of group. Only one type of group with order one. All right, that's pretty easy. Let's take a look at groups of order two. So order one. So let's look at order two. Okay, that means that the first element is going to be the identity. The second element we'll call A. So here's E, here's A. So let's fill in stuff, right? I know that the identity has to uh, spit back whatever the other element is. Well, A star A, or A circle A, can't be A or else I have a repeated element, right? So I'll make a little note here. This thing. Uh, must be E. Can't be A, or else the cancellation laws don't apply. Cancellation laws won't work. Okay, and so we're locked into just one possible type of group of order two. Therefore, only one type of group of order two. Any group that you know that has two elements in it, exactly two elements, will have to take the form in a table of E, A, A, E. In fact, we did one in class, and I think, let's see, what did that, what was that? Was it one? and negative one, and we use multiplication. And so if you make that group, this ends up being one, negative one, negative one, one. One is your E, negative one is your A, right? Same exact thing. So these two groups, I can't remember if we learned this term or not yet. When they're structurally exactly the same, you can call them isomorphic to each other. It's called isomorphic. It's sort of like congruent, but without the extra equal symbol underneath. Okay, order three is going to be a little different. So let's take a look at order three. Okay, so first we'll start with our little chart here. So first the identity, and then we'll talk about A and B. E, A, B. So if we fill in the stuff we know has to be true. It's based on the identity. And so then this spot right here must be E or B. Right. So uh, let's look at the two cases. Right. So case one, E. Let's make it E. If E. All right, so let me uh, just copy and paste this. All right, so if we made that one E, whoop, underneath. Huh. What happened here? There it is. So if I make this one E, then I immediately ran into a problem because this one would have to be B so as not to repeat an element in the row, but then I'm repeating one in the column. So that's not going to work. So, um, can't be E. Can't be E here, or else we repeat. column. 
Okay, so then it's got to be case two. Well, maybe. Let's see. So case two. If it's B. So let's make our chart. Edit. Paste. So here's our chart. And let me get rid of this. So what if it's B? Okay, so if it's B, then this one would have to be an E. Down here, this would have to be E, so as not to repeat in the column, and this would have to be A. Well, this yields a group. Right? And in fact, yields the only group. Only one possible type of group with order three. So if you end up working with a group that you know has three elements in it, its table has to look like this. It has to be in that form. Or at least you could rearrange it so it looks like that. Like the identity doesn't have to go first, but if you put it first and lined up the elements just right, it would look just like this table. Okay, order four, that's the, uh, the tricky one. And then we stop it. So order four, oops, sorry, order four. Uh, of course, now the pen stops working. Right. Okay, so let's make our chart. So I'll fill in the stuff that we have to have filled in right away. So that's E, A, B, C, E, A, B, C. All right. So then there's this one. So this could be E, B, or C. So I'm going to break these up. E will be our case one. Now, B would be case 2, and C, most of you might think that C would be case 3, but really, these cases would be identical. Because it doesn't really matter which one I put first. Um, it, so, here, let me, let me spell it out here. We don't really need two different cases. for B and C, B versus C. Um, if we just switched all B's and C's in whatever example we choose for our case, our results would be structurally the same. Now, structurally the same means isomorphic. That's the math term. OK, so it's really only two cases. So let's look at the case when we get E there. So case one. So we'll make this E, and then let's start filling in stuff. So if that's E, this one right here would have to be C, because it can't be B, and then that would have to be B, and then similarly, same deal here, C here, B there. Okay, so now let's look at this one. Right? That could be E, 
for A. Could be B or A. Well, that's two subcases here. So let's call this case 1A and this one case 1B. Sorry, maybe it would have been better to call them case 1E and 1A, but oh well. All right, so let me copy this. Paste. All right, so here's our case 1A. Okay, so that would be if this one is E. So if that's E, then let's see, this would have to be A, and this would have to be A, and this one would be forced to be E. We haven't repeated anything, and it turns out that this thing does form a group. It's, it meets all the other properties. Um, and so this group, so here's one type of group. This group turns out to be isomorphic to the Klein 4 group. Uh, it's also known as the Theogrupa. That's German. Uh, Theor means four in German, and Grupa, well, hopefully you can figure out that means group. Uh, and so the symbol that's often used for this is V. Right? It's not a K4 or anything like that. It's called V um, for, for Viergruppe. It's often called the Klein 4 but written V. And then you'll notice you, you don't really see it written like this very often. You just see V, and that's kind of the lazy mathematician thing where if they leave this off, but they're talking about a group, you realize that the binary operator is implied even though it's not listed. Okay, so that's one. So here's a group. Well, let's look at the other case. Right, so paste. Okay, so that would be if it's, ugh. So instead of E, this slot is going to be, what did I say? B, right? No, A, sorry, A. So if that one's A, this one has to be E, this one has to be E, and this one has to be A. Okay. So this group, this actually is a group. This group is isomorphic to Z4 plus 4. Now Z4 plus 4 is this group. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then the group looks like this. 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 3, 0, 1, 2. But this, does, this chart doesn't mimic that chart yet. You, 0 is obviously E. But the problem is that in this chart, the second diagonal element here is E, which in our case is zero, but the zero is down here instead. So it's a little bit easier to kind of look at, to rearrange the chart, um, which I would not say is an easy thing to rearrange necessarily. You have to kind of really think carefully as you do it to not make a mistake. If I actually arrange this chart zero, two, three, one, 0, 2, 3, 1. Well, then this is going to be 0. Uh, this one will also be 0 because 2 star 2 or 2 plus 2 is 0 here. Uh, 3 plus 3 is 2 and 1 plus 1 is 2. And then this is the identity. 0 is the identity, so I can fill in that part pretty easily. And then I can kind of Sudoku my way through the rest of this thing. Did I mess this up? Let me see. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. This is a 1 and a 3. 
this is a 1 and a 0, and this is a 3 and a 0. And now if you look at it, you might be able to tell that the 0 goes with E, this E over here. The 2 is just like the A, this one. The 3 works just like the B, and the 1 works just like the C. So what you could do is you could say that the uh, way to map from this one to this one is with an explicit mapping. You say, well, if I plug into phi, and I call it phi of E equals 0, and phi of A equals 2, and phi of B equals 3. So it's plugging into here to get these. And phi of C equals 1. And what I've done is I created a function that goes from my first set to my second set, C4. And it preserves this kind of relationship in the binary operation. Okay, so this thing right here is a one-to-one -one, uh, and onto mapping from the first set to the second set that preserves the binary operation, or at least the structure of the binary operation. Okay? So these two groups are isomorphic to each other. Okay, that's a diversion. Let's go back. We've only done case one now, and we got two different groups out of it. So what we need to do now is look at case two, and we'll deal with B instead of C. But again, C, thankfully, if we use C, everything comes out exactly the same. So let's look at it. What if it was B? So let me cut and paste this guy. Copy. Case two. Okay, so B goes there. All right. Well, let's fill stuff in. Um, let's see. That can't be E because this can't be C. So this one has to be C. That would be. Uh, similarly, same deal is going on right here. Um, this can't be A because then this would have to be E, but then I'd repeat. So this would be E and A and A there. And then this would have to be B. Okay, now it turns out that this is also isomorphic to this, Z4 plus 4. Okay, it's a different mapping though. It's not, E doesn't turn into 0, A doesn't turn into 2. In this case, um, this mapping, let me copy this one. Oops, too much. Copy. Paste. In this one, you might be able to tell E works like zero. That's definitely true. The identities always, if they're isomorphic, they always have to map to each other. Uh, in fact, that's often a good first place to start if you have to find this isomorphic function. Okay. A ends up working just like one. B ends up working just like 2, and C ends up working just like 3. Good rule of thumb, look for where the identities are. Right? Anything on that diagonal, that's going to do the same sort of thing right here. So those are often good starting points. OK, so this right here is a phi mapping, again, E, A, B, C. To Z4. It's 1 to 1 and on to Z4. Um, and, uh, and since this case led to the same sort of structure of Z4 plus 4, right? So this is isomorphic to Z4 plus 4. Uh, then we only ended up with two possible groups. 
right? We ended up with either something isomorphic to Z4 plus 4 and something isomorphic to the Klein 4 group or D. Right? So um, there are only two possible groups of order 4. It's either isomorphic to Z4 plus 4, or it'd be isomorphic to the Klein 4 group, which is also just referred to as B sometimes. Now I'll give you a couple extra notes here. Um, we're not going to work our way through 5. Um, but it turns out that Zn plus n forms a group for any n uh, any n that's a positive integer. Okay. Uh, if you have order 5, turns out there's only one type of group. Um, they're all isomorphic to, and since Zn plus n <laughs> forms a group, it's got to be isomorphic to Z5 plus 5. Okay, for order 6, there's only two types of groups. And in this case, they're all either isomorphic to Z6 plus 6, or isomorphic to S3 composition. That's the, um, the symmetries of the equilateral triangle. I don't know if you remember that or not, but, or if we've even covered it yet. And then uh, for order P, where P is prime, then there's only one type of group. And that group would then have to be isomorphic to Z, whatever the prime number is, and then addition mod whatever the prime is. Okay, so I hope that helps a little bit, um, and uh, I hope that made some sense as we went through it. All right, I'll see you guys soon.